Hello, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're well and getting the miles in on your road, gravel or mountain bike, wherever you are around the world. Now, have you ever seen a bike as light as this before? It's claimed to weigh just 3.3 kilograms, making it possibly the lightest road bike in the world. And we'll take a closer look at the bike and how it's so light in a bit. But first, some more juicy tech news to bring to your attention. So let's dive in. And we'll start with the news that BMC, the Swiss bike brand, might be set to launch a new road bike in the very near future. The company sent out a press release this week announcing its partnership with the Red Bull F1 team of Max Verstappen. And actually that they've been working with the team for some time now and the fruits of this labor will be released very soon. Now what this new bike might be is anybody's guess, but this relationship, this partnership between F1 and cycling is nothing new. We've seen many bike brands and many F1 teams get together in perfect harmony over the years. And many F1 drivers use road bikes and mountain bikes for training between races. Sebastian Vettel, for example, has a Jay Laverick road bike. And Valtteri Bottas is a really super keen cyclist as well. You might follow him on Strava. And I actually bumped into him while I was in Nice a few weeks ago as well. You see that video linked down below and up above in case you missed it. So a close synergy partnership between F1 and cycling already exists. And this partnership between Red Bull and BMC is a new one. I can't wait to see what this new bike and what benefits they get from the F1 team look like when it's launched hopefully very soon. Factor Bikes has launched not one, but two brand new bikes this week. But they're not road bikes, oh no, they're mountain bikes. Now who saw that coming? Not me, that's for sure. Now there are plenty of bike brands that do really good road bikes and really good mountain bikes as well. But quite a few road bikes, not mentioning any nations here, Italy perhaps, where the mountain bikes aren't that good, certainly not as good as the road bikes. But these new mountain bikes, the first from Factor, actually look really good. And I can't wait to take a closer look at them in the flesh. So what we have are two cross-country race bikes, a hardtail and a short travel full suspension mountain bike. The bikes look really good and carry quite a few features from their road bikes. So the tube shaping is very similar to road bikes and the drop rear stays on the hardtail are very similar too. And we have some details that I've not yet seen on a mountain bike, but we have seen on road bikes like the T47 press fit threaded bottom bracket, for example. So might we see Chris Froome on one of these mountain bikes in the future? I strongly doubt it, but you never know. Watch this space. He might announce he's becoming a mountain biker when he retires from road racing. But these bikes are currently being ridden, well, the race probably comes to an end by now, in the Cape Epic, the eight day stage race down in South Africa in Cape Town. Amazing race, did it 10 years ago. Love to go back there again and do it. But let me know if you want me to take a closer look at these bikes. And if you want a review of one of these bikes, a hardtail or the mountain bike, or not bothered and you want to stick to the road bikes, let me know by leaving a comment down below. Don't worry, that super lightweight 3.3 kilogram bike is coming up really soon. But first, one more bit of tech to talk about. Not a new product as such, but more of a tech trend. These Vittoria tubeless tire insert. Now, you might have seen my interview with Josh Portner from Silka, link down below in case you missed that the other day. And with the Cobble Classic coming up very soon, so the Tour of Flanders and Paris-Roubaix, especially Paris-Roubaix with the brutal cobbles, We've seen at this race over the last few years. In fact, last year it was won on tubeless for the first time. And we've seen a lot more movement in tubeless technology in these cobble classics where punctures are a higher risk. So minimizing punctures is a key concern and an area where tubeless can really demonstrate its benefit over more traditional tubular tires, which are glued onto the rims. And speaking to Josh Portner the other day, he was saying that he reckons the big breakthrough in tubeless, for pro rides at least, are tyre inserts. Now, foam tyre inserts are a bit of a mountain bike technology. And again, this is a case of mountain biking leading and road bike following. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck are these? Don't worry, you're not alone. I'll do a separate video on these, a full explainer, installation and ride review. So watch out for that fairly soon. But 
in a nutshell, a foam liner is, as the name says, a foam liner that goes inside a tire and looks like, in the case of this product, that is a foam liner. Now the idea, and Josh Portner really went into detail on this, so definitely worth checking out that podcast and video link down below. For pro riders at least, the potential for this is to remove the need for sealant. Now with a tube of tire, you have an airtight chamber and adding sealant will plug any small holes from a thorn or glass. And that, in my experience, is great for riding crappy country lanes and minimizing or eliminating the risk of a puncture. Now for pros, the challenge for the mechanics and the service course is installing all the tires and the sealant and maintaining that sealant in all the tires. So what Josh is proposing, and apparently some riders and teams are doing this, is rather than use sealant, they're using a foam liner. So this, when inside a tire, will compress from the air pressure. So no sealant, airtight chamber, this inside. When you get a puncture, this expands and allows the rider to ride on that lower pressure tire, but it's not on a rim. Much in a way, a tubular tire, a glued on, so on tire, can be ridden when flat, the real big benefit of a tubular tire over clinchers with inner tubes. If you ever try to ride a flat tire with an inner tube and clincher, you know you can't, it just, just doesn't work. So an interesting technology, I can see some of you um, yeah, rubbing your chins a little bit at this idea of adding more complexity, more cost, more maintenance um, to your bikes, but yeah. Stay tuned for a video on that fairly soon. Now, does weight matter to you? Yes, no, let me know down below. If it does, then this stunning 3.3 kilogram road bike might be right up your street. It definitely makes a claim for the world's lightest road bike. More on that in a moment though. So what we have is a stunning custom creation by a Chinese cyclist. And I'll put a link to his Instagram in the original video down below in the description so you can go and check it out if you want afterwards. On his Instagram, you've got a really good detailed breakdown, so I won't repeat that here. You can go through every component by the gram and see how the bike really became as light as it has become. And the reason the bike is so light, well, it starts with a frame. For hill climbing, for weight weenies, the Cannondale Super 6 Evo High Mod Rim Brake Bike is one of the lightest frames in the world. About 600 grams, 650 grams or thereabouts, depending on paint. So a really super light bike. And then the frame is built up with one of the lightest group sets ever made. SRAM's long running, legendary 11 speed red. Mechanical shifting, rim brakes, a fantastic group set. I still have that on my own Super 6 Evo as it happens. And then we have a far smattering of German high-tech, high-carbon, high-expense, low-weight components. A who's who of German weight weenie brands. So 3.3 kilograms. My question to you is, would you ride a bike? Would you be safe, happy riding a bike weighing this little? Take it up and down your ferret climbs? I'm not so sure to be honest. I'd love to have a go, but I've never ridden anything that light. I think six, five and a half is the lightest I've ever ridden, but 3.3 is something else. That is super light. Can we imagine a future where we are all riding regular stock bikes this light? A specialized S-Works Ethos gets down to 5.7, I think, off the top of my head, which is still good two kilos heavier, but getting close. But to the claim of this being the lightest bike in the world, not quite. There's now a bike in my research for the video that weighs an astonishing 2.7 kilograms. That must be one of the lightest road bikes I've ever seen. If you know lighter, let me know by leaving a comment down below. All this talk of super lightweight bikes and expensive parts got me wondering, how important is bike weight and what difference does it actually make out on the open road? Do you wanna see a video where I compare a lightweight bike to a not very lightweight bike and see what the difference is on some climbs, descents, and flat roads. Let me know if you do want to see that video by hitting the like button. Anyway, that's all for now. A nice roundup of tech news. Any questions, put them down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching.